What if I told you you could wirelessly connect your camera directly to a generative AI? Would you use it for evil or might you use it for good? I've actually been working on this problem for over a year, maybe two now. And anybody that regularly follows my work is probably aware of my position. If you're not, feel free to use the link in my bio to read an entire article. I wrote about how I think it's problematic that photographers, especially photographers, are using generative AI in a way that I think is pretty unethical. Creative, but unethical, compared to how I think these tools can and should be used. So I'd like to introduce you to Insight, which is a tool I've been developing this last year that does exactly what I said. It connects your camera wirelessly to a generative AI. I wanna do a quick demo of exactly how it works. All you need is a camera that supports FTP, which almost all professional level camera bodies do. I'm using the Nikon ZF here, which is a recent favorite of mine. All you need is the connection, which is provided by Insight. Uh, a hotspot, uh, meaning your local home Wi-Fi or your phone Wi-Fi, which is what I'm gonna pair this camera to right now. Um, all your settings, once you've had it set up for the first time, are saved in the camera. So literally all you need to do is turn on your Wi-Fi and connect to it. Then it's as simple as taking photos and hitting one button on your camera to send that photo. It's already sent actually, uh, just in that like one second. What's amazing about the setup is that there's no manufacturer's app required. You don't have to deal with that Sony app, the Nikon app, the Canon app. This goes straight from your camera directly to Insight with no app required. Literally, you can shoot and just send photos and you can send bulk photos a few at a time if you want. The huge benefit of not having an app to deal with is one, you don't have to deal with the pairing process of Bluetooth and, and all that kind of stuff. And two, you can get right back to shooting while the photos are sending in the background. There is literally no delay. It does not interrupt your process of shooting. So if you decide to do this, and there's a moment unfolding in front of you, you can jump right back into shooting and it'll keep sending your images in the background. Now, what Insight does is generate four thumbnails based on your source photo, the original one you started with, um, to try and take your source, whatever subject is in there. And if there is no subject, like the one I just sent of this uh, couch and corner, it will actually try and add subjects to it, which can be kind of amazing sometimes. But if you have a source subject, it will take that person in that scene, anonymize them by blurring their face, and then generate four pose ideas um, that hopefully just inspire you to try something you otherwise might not have tried before during your session. It takes about a minute for the entire turnaround of when you send the image from your camera to when it gets messaged to you directly to your phone. And the messaging is supported through just regular iMessage and SMS, um, along with, for international people, WhatsApp. And one added bonus feature, it actually sends a link to your original file as well. So if you just wanted a quick JPEG to uh, send off to your second shooter or your assistant or maybe even your client for some reason, you can do that within about 10 seconds, literally. Just click this, it'll be text message to your phone in 10 seconds. A minute later, you'll get the generative AI, which uh, is what you're looking at right now on my screen. It tried to take the mess of uh, this pile in my corner here and add people to it in a way that you know might work, may not. Uh, it kind of invents what the people are gonna look like because it actually doesn't know. But like I said, if you start a source photo with somebody that's in the scene, the results are highly, highly applicable. It doesn't look exactly like your couple, but it mirrors them in terms of bone structure, maybe eye color, hair, and the outfits that they're wearing. Of course, the scene that you're shooting in, the quality of light, all of these things that really allow you to see uh, potential new ideas with what you're working with in front of you. So I've actually got probably hundreds of examples at this point, but I wanna use the most recent shoot that I did. Uh, I normally don't uh, photograph solo individual people, normally I photograph couples, but I'm excited to show you uh, a session that I did uh, with a solo individual uh, because it's sort of out of my comfort zone. I actually really struggle personally because I'm primarily a wedding photographer where there's two people involved. I struggle with getting you know, pose ideas and different hand gestures and interactions when it's just one person, especially if that person's not a model, which uh, this this person isn't, this is just a person in front of my camera who uh, wanted headshots for a lifestyle brand they're launching. I actually took screen grabs of my phone as I was uh, making these and realized, oh my gosh, this is really working in the way that I just love to talk about and demonstrate to people. Um, you can see this is just a screen grab of my, my phone where I sent this source image. So this is what I actually took. Here's another uh, set of images that I actually made. Uh, but I wanna start kind of just looking at the results. So when I started getting some of the insight ideas back, this one immediately drew my attention. This bottom right one with the hands kind of uh, like 
blocking out one of the eyes. And I use that to inspire this setup with my subject. It's not exactly the same. It doesn't quite have the straight fingers, but that doesn't matter. It, this is really just meant to kickstart a direction to take things. It's still on you. It still requires your work and ability to recognize what is cool or not in an idea and ultimately your craftsmanship as a photographer to take the actual photo. And I absolutely would not have personally thought to do this kind of pose. Another example that it sent that I really liked was this kind of upper right one here with curling of the hands kind of against the shoulder. Let's see if we can find this one in the shoot. Should be right about after. Yep, yep, here we go. The They kind of misunderstood what I was talking about. I didn't, because people will kind of mirror what you're doing. I think I must have not done it exactly what I had in mind, but it doesn't matter. I would not have suggested this kind of uh, idea and that actually uh, ended up being one of my favorite photos just combined with the prism. Uh, but we did do something a little bit more like this one here, which isn't my favorite photo from the whole shoot, but it's still, again, kind of turning things in a, in a new way that I had never thought to do myself. I re actually really do like this one. Uh, let's look at some more. I want to pause at this photo. So the prism, uh, which is creating this distortion on the side here. At this point, I've practiced and used it so much, it's just muscle memory for me now. I just will randomly send, send them off when I think it's, you know, kind of a nugget of an interesting direction. Insight took this and kind of thought it was something uh, to do with the shape of the, the light source. Uh, it wasn't, it was actually the prism, but it gave me these four results, which I thought really interesting, but I really, really love this upper right one where the circle kind of halfway covered uh, the subject's face. I love that. I didn't have anything a light source like that. It inspired me while my subject was changing their clothes. Cut out the bottom of a paper cup that was in the kitchen nearby, throw it on top of my flash and get a really harsh, circular shadow to play with. I then held that in my hand and photographed my subject using this technique in a way that I never would have, where it was like purposely offset, where it was creating shadows. I got a huge variety of looks. I'm just gonna show a few here for the video. As I started using that Insight inspired photo, I sent those off to Insight and I started to get even more iterations of using a harsh light source in a way that uh, could be really creative. So I got this result back and I loved the right um, top and bottom ones, where the subject is kind of holding the flash themselves and where the subject, the actual light source is on the hands. For whatever reason, I just found that really interesting and engaging. I used that with my subject and took a few where they're just holding the uh, the light source themselves and kind of moving it around and creating a little bit of interest. Uh, again, somewhere I was holding it and then very similar to what was in the insight where it was highlighting the hands. And then I also took some where it was actually lighting the face and everything else the way I would normally think to maybe do it, but it doesn't matter. I still am using a light source in a way that I otherwise wouldn't have. Now, I've been documenting both the progress of making this tool and the progress of how I felt about it, uh, the photos I was getting during various sessions, uh, basically throughout this entire year. I've been documenting that in a series of videos, uh, two of which are out when it was sort of the alpha stage of Insight and two of which are yet to come. You can just look back at my YouTube channel or my Patreon about a lot more information related to kind of the evolution of this, but I just wanna do one more quick demo. Now, I don't have a, a couple in front of me, but I do want to take a picture of a picture <laughs> from a wedding earlier this year. This kind of gives me the effect of maybe having a couple in front of me uh, and the image on the back of my camera. So I'm going to send this off to Insight just while I'm talking right now. Uh, again, I can get right back to shooting while it's sending, but let's see how long it takes. It's already sent. So it is very, very fast to send off. And I already got a link to the original JPEG right back on my phone. That took maybe less than 10 seconds. Now, while we're waiting for the Insight pose ideas to come back, I just want to address some things that you know people have asked me along the way. Uh, number one is, okay, if you're getting sending things off, like that's fine, that seems easy enough, but then you get the results back on your phone. Aren't you looking at your phone while you have your couple like waiting in front of you? Yeah, if, if you're obvious about it. Like anything else, this takes a little bit of practice to see how it fits into your workflow or not. Uh, for me, I can randomly find bits of downtime when we're walking from one location to the next to, yeah, pull out my phone if I need to, or just look at my watch. If you have a smartwatch, you can also just look at the results there, but I find it not to be a problem or a distraction at all for my clients to just be discreetly looking at my phone. I do that all the time anyway. Oop, I just got the results back. So here's what Insight sent. Um, it's kind of suggesting a little bit of 
foreground flower or something like that, if I could find some. Or, uh, you know, I have actually often been known, take the bouquet and, and shoot through that uh, to create some depth. Um, and I hadn't really thought of that, but that would add something to kind of create either by having my camera lower and create a little foreground blur with the grass or maybe by shooting through the bouquet. But here's what's cool. You can actually just text uh, the word again and it will re-render from that same first image another four ideas. Additionally, you can think of these quadrants as boxes. So one, two, three, or four. And if you just reply one of those numbers, it will take that original source photo, re-render another four ideas, and give you a link to the high-res original if you wanted it for some reason. But I find that pretty helpful. If it's sort of starting in a direction but not really that great, instead of having to resend it again, you can just hit a number or literally reply with the word again, and boom, you'll get results in about a minute. Also worth noting that it's not a minute per image. If you send off multiple photos at the same time from your camera, they'll actually come back to back with about the same delta that you chose them uh, to begin with, all after about a minute. So if you just roll off four or five, you'll get this four pose ideas per original image after just about a minute. It's pretty great. While we're waiting for this last render to come back, I just wanna wrap up the the practice component of this. Like any technique, many that I've talked about throughout my career, prisming, using the ring of fire, you can sit there and take in the information about how it works and what it's doing. Hopefully it can make sense to you. There is something to be said about the fact that you need to practice, especially a tool like this. Once it's all set up, which literally, the first setup only takes about five minutes, and you can go to insight.photo to see the, the camera set up and everything else you need. Uh, but once it's all set up, it's just about remembering the fact that you can even have this tool to begin with because it is such a new creative input that nobody is gonna be used to. This is not something that has ever existed. And even if this fails as a business, I'm still gonna use it for myself because it is this new sort of creative pull and energy that I never had while shooting before. But because it is a completely new way of working, leveraging such a powerful tool like generative AI, I can't stress enough that the more you experiment and practice and play around with it, uh, the easier it gets. For me now, it is such muscle memory that it's just a completely seamless thing. My couples don't know when images are being sent off. They don't know when I'm looking at my phone or not. It's very seamless. But I've actually demoed Insight with other photographers that um, took a different approach. They would actually show the couple the, the four pose ideas and say, do this one. Can you just do this one? And I thought that was a little too forward and it, like it would invite a lot of questions maybe. But I actually asked the couple afterward, like, hey, did you find that helpful? Was that like weird? And they both said, actually, no, that was really helpful because we could see exactly what you were going for. And they kind of looked like us. We could see ourselves within them. So that was interesting feedback I personally didn't expect. And I'm really, really excited to see how everybody uh, ends up using a tool like this. Okay, so these results are actually very different. And that's because there is a little bit of randomness involved with the results that Insight creates. Sometimes it's gonna be in a really similar pose that you started with. Sometimes it's gonna take a completely different direction with it, with a couple being really close together or holding on arms or what you see here kind of forward to back. So when it takes a more random approach, it may or may not be applicable, but the goal and the hope is that you'll see some component of it uh, that just gets your imagination and your and your creativity kind of working in a new direction. There's actually a whole ton of other features that are gonna be released with Insight throughout next year. I've got a lot planned, but there's two ready to go right now. One is the fact that you don't actually have to, if you don't want to, send images from your camera directly. You can just text them to the Insight chat. You can literally open your camera app, take a picture, uh, send that off to Insight and you'll get results. Um, you can also send photos from your camera roll. Uh, but the huge advantage to using the actual camera and lens that you have is that it will literally create a similar field of view and depth of field with the settings that you're using. So again, it's all about having results that are really, really applicable to what you're actually using. If you send a photo off from your phone directly, then it's your phone's camera and lens, or it's the image that's in your camera roll, which may not be the same lens and settings that you have. So you can, uh, just for ease or for fun, just send an image off, but you don't have to. Uh, the other feature is the help feature. You can literally just 
text message it the word help, and it will create an analysis of your most recently rendered photo. Now, this is gonna be a whole slew of text, which is probably not gonna be so easy during a session when you're actively working to like read through. But anytime you have downtime, maybe the videographer is taking them for a second, maybe you're eating a quick meal or something during the wedding reception. There's all kinds of opportunities to read a quick note. And this turnaround of the analysis really only takes about 30 seconds. So you could send it photos from your portfolio or your blog, or maybe something you're thinking about posting on social media, and it will give you a breakdown and critique that's actually trained entirely on my personal Patreon data. Uh, which is pretty extensive and kind of uses that as guide rails for how you might be able to improve things. It breaks things down into composition, pose, light, improvement idea. I'm just gonna quickly read and summarize, although I'm sure you could just do it yourself. Composition, the couple is centered, making for a balanced shot. Could benefit from more dynamic spacing. Background is very textures, trees, mountain sky, that don't detract from the subjects. That's good. Improvement idea. To add creativity, consider a shallow depth of field to create a more dreamy background. So maybe a longer lens than the 24 that I was using. That's pretty basic. Have the couple engaged in a small activity, like a twirl or whisper to capture a spontaneous moment. Awesome, maybe you wouldn't have thought of that. Play with leading lines like a pathway or the garden edges to draw more attention to the subjects. Now that is what I'm talking about. That is the kind of thing that I really love and, and sometimes forget to do myself is just create those really leading lines. Remember, there's always room to experiment with different perspectives like a low angle, looking up at the couple, which could give the composition an entirely fresh feel. It's suggestive in a way that it uses things in the actual environment that you have in front of you to hopefully elevate and improve your work. That's it. Insight is fully launched and ready. There's gonna be an introductory pricing literally until the end of this year. That's only two more days. Once the new year hits, the price is definitely gonna go up. The price is not gonna quite double, but it's going to go up. Up a lot. So if you want to lock in introductory pricing, which will include any new features as they roll out next year, now is the time to do it. If you're really budget conscious and you need a, a, maybe a three-day trial or something like that, you can send me a message directly and I will send you a special link for a three-day trial. I'm so excited to have created a tool that photographers can actually use that leverages the exciting new technologies like generative AI while you're actually in the process of making your work. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for your attention and I'm sure I'll be back soon. Bye everyone.